Okay, today is the 1st of June 2016 and I'm here in Grace Durham's flat in the new town in Edinburgh. Grace taught English at Watson's from uh, 1975 to 2006 when she retired. She was one of those um, strong inspirational teachers who <laughs> left her mark on many generations of pupils and for many years Grace was editor of the Watsonian and still maintains links with the school and with former pupils and you're looked on with a great deal of affection by your former pupils. Um, Grace, you weren't born in Scotland. You came here from the States. Can you tell us a little bit about your childhood? Mm, yes, I'm, and, I'm, I'm a Southern Belle. Yeah. I grew up in Georgia. Um, my parents are American and, you know, from the very, very early days. But I grew up in a rather eccentric household. My father loved Europe, fell in love with Europe during the war. And I've never been further west than Alabama. Most of my friends in Edinburgh know America considerably better than I do. But my father loved Europe and wanted to travel in Europe. So I suppose it was inevitable that one day I would spend some time in Europe. It never occurred to me that I would spend the rest of my life here. Um, at what point did you come and, and live in, in Europe? I, when I was graduating from university, I uh, took an English degree in, um, from the University of Georgia. I suggested to my father that I'd like to travel around Europe for a year. And this was 1968. And what was happening in the world in 1968 rather bypassed the small, deep backwater of Georgia where I was. Um, and he said no. So I had to come up with another idea. And I thought, well, education, he will approve of that. And I applied to Durham University in St Andrews. And Durham said no. And St Andrews said, come and join us. So that was that. He agreed reluctantly. But I think secretly he was quite proud that I wanted to spend time in Europe. So he loved it so much. And it was a, a, a second degree, but it was... Not like really. I just year. did an extra year. I mean, the Germans have a wonderful word for it, a Wanderjahr. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was. Oh, it was a wonderful year. It was a year mm. of real education. I dipped into this English course and that English course, oh, yeah. fine art, history, um, and read voraciously. I'd never mm. read any modern literature. And, I didn't have a big allowance, but the dollar was strong. If somebody mentioned a, a novel, I would go and buy the paperback and read it. And um, and it was wonderful. It really was a most fantastic education. And that changed the direction of your life, really, didn't it? Well, I thought, yes, it did. But I thought, well, I just have one more year. And I needed a job for that. And I could only get a work permit to teach. And I had a teaching qualification, but the last thing I wanted to do was teach. But I wanted to stay in Scotland. And, you know, as soon as I arrived in the classroom, I knew that that was exactly what I wanted to do. But I often wondered if I'd stayed in the States, if I would have gone into teaching, and I suspect not. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you went into the classroom in what school? What was your first school? Madras College in St Andrews, mm -hmm. which at that time was, uh, it was very cushy teaching. It was third, fourth, fifth, sixth academic streams. Yeah. It's like an English grammar school. Yeah, the and old Scottish senior Wonderful, yeah. wonderful old-fashioned headmaster, Dr. Uh -huh. Thompson, who really became your father figure to me. Yeah. He was a lovely person. And then after Madras? I went to St. Leonard's uh -huh. just for a year, but by that time I, I, I knew I needed to leave St. Andrews, that if I didn't oh. leave then, I wouldn't leave, and I didn't want to spend the rest of my life there. They talk of the bubble in St Andrews. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And um, so this job at Watson's came up. In and 1975. Which that's right. A key year in Watson's. Well, it history. was. It was the year. I mean, it was the year of the amalgamation, and it was, it was very lucky for me because, you know, I was the new girl on the block. But then, almost every, everybody else was new. Of course, the boys had been there, but not in this. Not in this situation. So it was a very. It was a very comfortable introduction to the school because everybody wanted the amalgamation to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, so everyone bent over backwards to, to be nice to me. And um, Roger Young was headmaster then, so, and he was wonderful. Uh, I, I, I know you admired him greatly, yes. as many of us yes. did. Most of us, all of us did. Yes. Um, speak a little bit about him and your impressions. Well, 
he came into my classroom once, many years after he retired, and Roger had shrunk quite a bit. He was never a tall man. Mm. But I, I, I introduced him to the class and I said, what you see before you is a very large man. Mm. And they tittered a bit and he talked to them. And when he left, I said, do you understand what I meant by calling him a large man? And they knew exactly. Yes. I mean, he had a large character. He was a very, very good person and an inspirational headmaster. Um, uh, and he was enormously kind to me. The Christmas, uh, the second Christmas I was at Watson's, my father died. And I went back to the States at the beginning of December. And I'll never forget, as long as I lived, coming back to school, that the January, coming after, came back from the States. He was outside the school waiting for me to drive in to welcome me back and give me a big hug. Oh, yeah. And somehow that sort of summed up his, the sort of school he ran, yeah. where he actually cared yeah. about staff and pupils as, as individuals. Yeah. Um, I only overlapped with him for two years, but mm. he gave this impression of, when he was with you, that you were the most important person. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And that, that's a rare gift, that. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he was a man of great insight. and. You know, he wanted he wanted his pupils to think and you know, he and Graham Scott set up yeah. the six form tutorial groups mm. uh, which were marvelous um, they were it was titled who am I and he yes. really did want people to explore their inner being um, the story goes that he one of the tutorial groups he ran the last uh, group of the session one of the pupils made a cake and iced it, and I wrote in icing on the top, who the hell am I? <laughs> Which yeah. caused him great amusement. <laughs> yeah. And the, these tutorial groups, the famous TGs, that mm. went on for many years, what was their value, do, do you think? Well, uh, one of the great values was they were, they were small and they were mixed. Uh, you had very academic people in them mm. and, and less academic. And, and that was good for everyone. But it... You, you had to be careful um, because it um, not to dominate it and, and mm. let them take the running. I mean, there mm. was a structure to it. I remember one that you and I shared. Oh, yeah. And we, we had at the end of the session, we had a party. And I remember seeing Andrew as a tiny, tiny baby in his, oh, yes. in his Andrew, cot. Andrew, our son, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. and Andrew, That's right, yes. And Andrew yes. Slade is now, what, 30? 28. 28. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. No, I... Yes, because the, they used to come for four periods out of the seven-day cycle, two with one teacher mm. and two with another. Um, then I think they reduced the allocation, and now I think it's disappeared. Yes, but I know. I remember a number of, of Edinburgh University lecturers said they could always spot a mm. Watsonian mm. In, in a class yeah. because they were articulate, they were not afraid of saying what they thought. They weren't pushy, mm. but they had learnt at school yes. how to how to discuss ideas and concepts, and uh, they were enormously valuable. Yes, yes, um, yes. Speak to me about some of your English teaching now. You, you taught um, English language and literature <laughs> to I, all I, these I, generations. I, I, I felt incredibly privileged to be paid to talk about something I loved. I mean, yes. I, I was a reader, you know, forever. I mean, I, 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 literature is, and language, I'm fascinated mm. by language. It was in so much a part of my life, and just mm. having the opportunity to share that was a wonderful privilege. Mm. Um, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But every time I taught something new, some, some, not something new, but every time I taught a text that I taught before, I always found something new in it. Mm. And it's extraordinary how that really quite frightened the classes. That yeah. I didn't know the answer, all the answers to Hamlet, for example. Yeah. And I would say, well, I taught the last taught this two years ago. I've had different experiences. I'm a, a different person today than I was two years ago. So mm -hmm. I will look at it differently. I will see things that I hadn't noticed before. And they found it both exciting and slightly alarming because it's not like maths or chemistry where the answers are black and yeah. white. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's there. You were discovering this yes. each time anew with a new lot of people. And that was, yeah. I found that exhilarating. Mm -hmm. um, and even more exhilarating when they found something in a text 
that I'd not noticed. And that, and that, did that was just... Quite it, not a, not, it did happen quite a yeah, lot, yeah. but it was, it was so exciting. Mm. Uh, yeah. You know, and I so hope I'd given them tools to, to do that. Uh, Did you ever feel that you got a bit bored with teaching some of the texts? Oh yes, again and Lord again? of the Flies, a Lord oh. of the Flies. I, I <laughs> really felt that I could not teach Lord of the Flies again. Uh, it's it's a very very important novel. Yeah. It's on Miss Durham's list of of books that every educated person ought to read. Yeah. Purely prejudiced list. Yeah. <laughs> of books that every intelligent person should read, but. Um, but. Yeah. Enough's enough. Yes, yeah, yeah. and so. I and I last time I taught it, I thought I can't make this fresh to yeah. classes again, mm -hmm. and that's the time to stop. Yeah, but yeah. always feeling fresh yourself mm -hmm. and bringing something yes. new. Yeah, um, you worked with with many interesting and inspiring and original colleagues. Oh gosh, lots. Um, Donald Dool was head of English when when I started, and a real gentleman of, of the old order. And it took me about six months to persuade him that every time I came up to him in the staff room that he did not have to stand up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, a lovely, lovely man. And whenever my mother came over, he and his wife would have us to dinner. Um, he was, he was marvellous. And then Harry, Harry Quinn took over from Donald. It was a, a very different animal, but Harry was, I mean, I learned so much from Harry. Um, mm. and he phenomenally intelligent, but, mm. and I, I used to think I knew Dickens more than anybody else. But then Harry would make some comment about Dickens, and I thought, oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, he, he was wonderful. And people like Bram Scott and Donald MacDonald, um, yeah. who were wonderful with the sixth form, uh, mm. and really helped. Help them trans do that transition, make that transition mm -hmm. from school to university. Made it so much easier. Yeah. Giving them enough freedom to maybe sometimes make mistakes. Yes, but that's realize. right. And yeah. yes, and without and, and to make mistakes in a in a secure environment. Yes. Yes. Um, yes, and I think that sort of teacher doesn't have, doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know why. I, I don't know. If I, I, maybe think the same <laughs> but, but you have to hope that some of the younger ones will turn well, into Well exactly, this. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah. Um, and you had many tutees, people you advised in the sixth yes. form and then you, you helped them choose their university courses and maybe launch them on their And that was, that was, that was, that was probably the most thrilling part of teaching. Mm. Um, it, you're creating, creating a relationship that Became both both sort of academic and and um, and personal, and I've kept up with a lot of them. I know and, you have. Yes, in fact, yes. um, I had an email yesterday. Uh, some of them are giving me a seventieth birthday party in London this summer. Oh, Isn't that lovely? How wonderful! Yeah, really, I was really oh, touched. Oh, that, oh, that's super. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, because yes, I, I know that. Um, a lot of former pupils speak of you with great affection and respect. But, uh, well, I, I mean, it was, it was a wonderful privilege to, to get to know these kids and, um, and, and watch them move from being sort of anonymous people to people I knew and, and some have remained friends, um, mm. uh, have become friends. Mm. And yes. that's, um, I'm yeah. very privileged. Yeah. Um, you always like to, to push and challenge the pupils. Um, do you think that the modern exam system, the modern hires, the, the books they have to read and so on, don't push them hard Absolutely, enough? yes. Um, I mean, I, I just felt very strongly that if you, don't, if you have a text that you have to work at and, and really get involved in, you're going to learn so much more. Mm -hmm. and, um, I don't know, when I started teaching, they did two plays, two novels, and a whole lot of poetry yeah. for the exam. And nowadays, they do two texts. And I, I rather feel the system is shortchanging them. I, I feel that very strongly. Mm -hmm. um, particularly with English, when mm -hmm. there's so much, so much rich literature mm -hmm. they could study. Um, How do you feel about the teaching of Shakespeare? I love teaching Shakespeare. Um, uh, 
uh, I mean, he is the great genius. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, it's it's not always easy. I mean, the language is is difficult. But uh, my favourite experience of teaching Shakespeare happened. Well, I'll tell you exactly. October of 1986. Um, I was in France for half term, and I came back to discover that my lovely black Labrador Toby had been run over. Mm -hmm. And my I went into the fifth form class the day time started and picked up Hamlet where we'd left off before half term, and there we were on the to be and not to be soliloquy. And I just said, look, I can't do this without crying. And the rumor, rumor story got round, they knew about Toby, but I told them. And I got to the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune with tears streaming down my eyes. Oh, yes. And, but what was so interesting, that the number of, of that, uh, people in that class came up to me afterwards, over that week. Yes. And so they'd never seen Shakespeare as anything other than an intellectual exercise. And that it, they'd never seen Shakespeare actually mean something personally mm -hmm. before. And, uh, and this, this yes, opened yes. the door. And I never told Hamlet again without telling the class about the death of my Labrador. Yeah, <laughs> yes. D dogs, uh, you love dogs. Oh, yes, yes. And everyone knows you love dogs. Yes. You, <laughs> what a... the camera can't see is an oh. ancient Springer Spaniel on the floor yeah, beside uh, me. Snoring. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can hear her snoring. <laughs> <laughs> um, there were, there were sometimes you used to bring your dogs into school. Oh yes, oh yes, and um, um, yes, they would come into class occasionally. Yeah. And, and then I'm afraid I was responsible for dogs being banned from the campus. Oh, so it was you? It was, it was <laughs> yes, I'm afraid it was me. It was when I was a puppy, I, I brought into the classroom in a cage. And it was a stupid thing to do, it was idiotic. But uh, the tragedy was that Maxima McLaren's yeah. uh, Bonnie was also banned, and yeah. Bonnie did no harm whatsoever. And um, I, I felt very guilty about that. Oh, it's a pity, yes, because... <laughs> well, I often so... thought, I mean, I walked the dog at lunchtime, and I was a good girl, and I picked up, but yeah. I often thought I did a social service, because there were some kids who didn't have friends and had come and walked the dog with me. Lunchtime's a long know, time, and they would come and, yeah. and walk with me and, and would chat. Um, I, I thought that was a very yeah, strong. Yes. And the dogs, it was always a point of contact with you, yes. wasn't it? And they'd come in and ask how the, how their dogs yes, were, and yes, so on. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> That's a pity. Um, you went. You you spoke about a visit to France and so on. You went to France with the school several times, didn't you? I did indeed. I I speak French with enthusiasm. I, mean, I, <laughs> I, I yeah yeah. I, I, my French is appalling, but I love Not France. At all. <laughs> and um, the second year I had a French exchange with a school in a suburb of Bordeaux and I was asked to if I would go with the second year and um, I was thrilled, I, yeah, wonderful. It was hard work, 48, yes. 14 year olds, yes. um, it, was, it was hard work but it was terrific fun and, um, and we took them to wineries, we took them to museums, we took them to the beach, the Dune de Pilar, um, they had a wonderful array of activities mm. and sadly the, the, that exchange finished last year, Yes, heartbreaking. Um, yes, I agree, yeah. yeah. And you, you looked after projects, the uh, Edinburgh I looked, project. I looked after the well, Edinburgh project. Well, I, what was that exactly? Well it was for, you had to have a cast down excuse not to go away on projects. And it could not be because you wanted to stay with your horse. Um, and um, it, often it was, it was very serious health issues. Yeah. Was, but I, I, was, I, oh dear, I admired my colleagues who went away for mm. 10 days or two weeks yeah. with the youth hostel. I just, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I felt very guilty, but I, I admired enormously. Yeah. Um, since you've retired, you've been very active in all sorts of areas. Yes, um, I've been very involved with an arts education organisation. We have ten lectures a year, and I'm one of the two people who chooses the lectures. They have to they have to be approved by the national organisation. Um, we have a lecture next week on um, silver, antique silver. Uh, 
which is one of my loves, and so I'm looking forward to that. And then we have lots of lots of events. We um, go to galleries for just to do a specific, not just any, uh, not just a whole gallery, but might uh, get a curator to take us around an exhibition yes. or go to a house with a nice garden. Or, and, and that's why. And I'm very involved with St. John's Episcopal Church. I'm on the vestry and chairman of the fabric mm -hmm. committee. Um, um, that keeps me very busy. Yeah. And the dog keeps me busy. I've done a bit of tutoring, which, I've, which has been wonderful, because I didn't want to give up teaching completely. Yeah. Um, and the idea of losing that contact with young people, it certainly was what kept me young. Yes. Um, yes. And I've always liked the one-to-one. And it's, uh, that's been very reward, rewarding. Yeah. Do you still continue with that? Yes, yes. I, I'll have one pupil next year, but I think that's probably all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now, just as we finish, um, do you, there'll be young teachers starting off in their career this year, for mm. example, maybe a new English teacher at Watson's, I'm sure. What, would, what advice would you give to someone starting off? To try not to be too hardened down by, by the system. I mean, obviously, you have to, to go with the system and all the assessment. But to try to make, particularly with English, to try to make it as personal as possible. Mm -hmm. And I suppose, and everybody, to give of yourself. I, you can't be a good teacher without giving of yourself. You can't be remote, detached. Um, and it's getting that balance right that's the difficult bit. But I can't imagine what my life would have been like if I hadn't had my 31 years at Watson's. Um, you know, I, I worked with some marvellous people. I taught absolutely fantastic kids, very bright, not so bright, um, but really, really nice people. And I'm a very, very lucky person. Grace Darrow, thank you very much. <laughs>